think his finger must feel better. I don't know if you guys are aware. Got a but on. yes, he uh, got a boo boo last week in the revival playing, so now he wears a band aid. So praise God that the pastor's uh, up and going on the piano. Uh, praise God, what a beautiful day that God has given us to celebrate our pastor and our youth pastors as well. Um, I want to take a moment before we start. I got a phone call um, before church, and I need to call someone. You know, this is very unusual, but it's better to be obedient sometimes. And if I'm not obedient to this individual, I'll be in a lot of trouble. Hello?
God, we pray, Jesus, for those that are home fighting sickness. God, we lift up Ashley and all the Kendrights, Lord, that have been struggling this week, God, for our precious granddaughter who's sick at home, and Rachel, that there's two, and we lift up Tim and Dina, God, that so desire to be here, but life's struggles and health issues keep them bound, and Lord, we're believing for healing, God, for Dina and Tim, God, quicken their bodies, Lord, lift up their spirits, God, where they be, God, I pray for the remainder of the service, God, you would anoint each song, uh, anoint Aunt Gail as she brings forth your word, in Jesus' mighty name, we praise you and thank you, amen. amen. You know, a church wouldn't be a church without people. Amen. Uh, one thing that I, I've learned over the years is what my grandmother taught us when we were growing up is that when you got people, you got problems. And every one of your problems that you bring to me, I take it to the Lord. Amen. And that's what we should all do. Amen. And uh, uh, we, we have pastored here now for six or seven years. And uh, we had this piano. I was thinking about that today. And this piano, we purchased it, I don't know, four years ago, five years ago, and two keys on it broke. And uh, it's because the, the operator, you know. <laughs> and so uh, we, we hired this man to come in, and he comes in from Indiana, and he takes it apart. And he just knows exactly what he's doing. And he took the, the whole thing apart, took the, the keyboard out and laid it on the altar. And I thank God for that. They laid it on the altar and he started taking, taking it all apart. And Sister Elizabeth, he, uh, he took all these white keys off and they were just laying there in a pile. And they didn't, you know, it's just plastic is all it is, really. Everything's plastic. And you look down inside the belly of it and it's just nothing but a computer. You know, that's all it is. And... I thought to myself, that's just the way we are. You know, that man knows how to take that whole thing apart. And thank God that he knows how to put it all back together. <laughs> amen. And sometimes the Lord has to take us apart. Amen. And throw us. Sometimes, though, we have a little flaw, don't we? And he throws us in the potter's field. But he always comes back and he makes us again and he molds us again and he makes us into something that he can use. I can't tell you how many mistakes that we've made over these six or seven years and uh, 43 years that God has given us on this earth. But we, we started ministering uh, almost 30 years ago. And uh, I was 14 years old when I preached the first time. I wouldn't even know if I'd call it preaching, but it was it was terrible. Nobody but grandma, mom, and dad probably listened. But anyway, it was terrible, Aunt Gail. And I think about all the years that you had to sit at Grandview Revival Center and listen to me try to hackle something out, you know. But God, God does it. God says, "Yeah, I have to take all these keys off." But thank God, He knows how to put us back together even better. Amen. Thank God. Sister Kristen.
good. God is so good. How many know everybody's going to be happy over there? Hallelujah. Praise God. I thank God it won't be long. He's going to split those eastern skies. Sister Wanda, I believe it won't be long just any day now. Amen. He's going to split those eastern skies. Praise the Lord. Amen. There's a happy land of promise over in the great beyond where the saints of earth shall sing the glory still.
uh, we were <laughs> we're blessed to have Brother Joey up here today. Yeah. Amen. I thank God for that. Brother Joey comes along and he can play the bass as well as Brother Bays. I don't know why Brother Bays isn't up here, but uh, I said, uh, Brother Joey, I want you to be ready anytime because I said God is going to bless me and I'm going to start getting off of this piano a little bit. And Brother Joey is also a piano player. And I said, Brother Joey, get ready. I might not have told you all of this, but it didn't get long. It didn't get long. And I said, when God tells me I can get off, amen, I said, you come running. Amen. And if he goes running, well, then you just won't have a piano player. It's just Christy will be on the keyboard, but you just won't have a piano player. But that's how God is blessing. I told Brother David the other day, I said, because uh, really, Brother Tim Dotson prophesied this. Uh, and... Uh, I listen, I listen, I try to. But um, I told Brother David, I said, if God sends us another lead guitar player, we'll have two guitar players. Amen. That's just the way God is. Amen. I thank God there's not a jealous bone in the body up here. Amen. But we get along fitly. Amen. How many know that God is a chain breaker? Hallelujah. If you've got pain, he's a pain taker. Amen. Sister Chelsea. Been walking the same old road miles and miles. Been hearing the same old voice tell the same old lies. You're trying to feel the same old voice inside. There's a better life.
appreciated. I know that some of you can't, and I understand that. And Sister Alvin and I sure don't pastor a church for the money because you you go broke in a minute. Amen. But I thank you, those of you that were able to give, and the church is offering. What a blessing. Heavenly Father, we thank you this morning for this time of giving, and Lord, we praise you, God, for everything that you have done for this church. I thank you, Lord, for all those that are here this morning. And God, I pray, Lord, that they receive what they have come to get, and Lord Jesus. But most importantly, I pray that we worship you, adore you this morning. 
I pray that you bless both offering and tithes, Lord, and those that have to give, Lord, that we praise you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Sister Chesley. Let me walk, blessed Lord, in the way thou hast gone, leading straight to that land above. Giving cheer everywhere to the sad. physically they grow too amen but spiritually they're growing and uh, I just love it and I've seen some that have uh, leaps and bounds and I think of little Hannah she got baptized last Sunday she wanted to get baptized amen her and brother Micah and Hannah and, and uh, Ethan amen they all, you'll see pictures up here occasionally and uh, sister Hannah we, we got her a big person Bible now Amen. And I'm just excited to see what God's going to do for her. Amen. Amen. But I appreciate this church. Amen. And this morning, we have uh, I didn't, but Brother David asked Aunt Gail to come, which I'm always excited about. Amen. So let's give a big hand as Aunt Gail comes and brings the word to soul, obeys the Lord today. Amen.
again to be back in your house. We thank you for this congregation of people, Lord, and how that you're moving upon them and blessing them. And we ask that as we speak your word, that not one word that you want spoken will fall to the ground, but it will fall upon hearing ears and a receiving heart and spirit. Just anoint your servant today because your word is already anointed. And we want to be able to speak what you would say. Yes. And we ask yes. this yes. in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Glory to God. We give honor to Pastor Rob yes. and Belinda as the pastors of the church. Hey, I'm not visitor no more. No. I'm home <laughs> folk. had one of the little boys come up to me when I come in the door and he said, I think you can be my aunt, great aunt Gail now. <laughs> I said, yes, I can be. <laughs> amen, amen. I've had 
had scriptures on my mind, well, for two years now, God keeps taking me back to these scriptures, and I'll minister on them, and then God will take me back again to them for, to bring out something else. And so this morning, I want to go to 2 Timothy. I'm going to be doing a lot of different uh, reading places, but and if you want to jot them down instead of turning there, that's fine. But I want to go to 2 Timothy, and we're going to go to chapter 1, and we're going to go to the 6th and 7th verses. And when I read this, what I want to do is I'm going to read it to you in five different translations. Okay? Because I want you to hear what it says. But I only read the King James. That's good. That's wonderful. I preach all the King James. Okay? <laughs> but sometimes in studying, you can go to another translation and God opens up a word to you that you didn't see before that. So here's what I'm going to read. 2 Timothy chapter 1. Verse 6, yes. and I'm reading first in the King James. It says, Wherefore I put thee in remembrance, that thou stir up the gift of God which is in thee by the putting on of my hands. Yes, Lord. Amen. The seventh verse says, For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, Amen. but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Yes. And what the Lord, for the last two years, maybe three now, he's been saying to me, stir the fire. Amen. Stir the fire. Amen. Now, I'm a country girl, Freddie. You know that. <laughs> and yes. I know how to build a fire. Yes. When my husband and I first got married, we had a coal stove. He was a city boy. He didn't know how to build a fire and keep it going. Okay, I said that night, first night we spent in our home, the fire went out and the coffee beside the bed froze in the cup. I said, never again will you build a fire. I will take care of it. <laughs> My dad taught me well. So God has been dealing with me about stirring the fire. Yes. And when you build a fire, whether it's a campfire or in a stove, you have to stir the embers that are in there to cause it to be able to be hot enough to catch something else aflame that it can burn. Well, my mission today with you is to stir the embers and set the flame a-going in order for you to burn in God's spirit. Yes. Now, in the NIV, it says this. For this reason, I remind you to fan into flame the gift of God which is in you through the laying on of my hand. Yes. Oh, let's go to the Message Bible. And the special gift of ministry you received when I laid hands on you and prayed, keep that ablaze. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, ain't it good? Well, I might run in a minute. The Living Bible says this being so, I want to remind you yeah. to stir into flame the strength yeah. and boldness yeah. that is in you, yeah. that entered you when I laid my hands yeah. upon your head and blessed you. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, well. Oh, now the New Living Translation, yes. it says, this is why I remind you to fan into flame the spiritual gift God gave you 
when I laid my hands on yeah. you. To fan and to flame the gifts of God that we have been Amen. given. Yeah. Yeah. Now, That's good. I'm feeling something up here this morning now. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Now, the gift of the Holy Ghost. Is God's gift to his body, Amen. to his church. If you haven't yet received the baptism of the Holy Ghost, you need it. Especially in this hour we're living right now. And in the days ahead and the years ahead. And I don't think there's going to be that many years ahead. Every sign is pointing to the coming of the Lord. But the Holy Ghost is the gift of God to his church, his body. And when he gave it, he told them in John 14 uh, that he would send them another comforter. Yes, he, he would send them a teacher. Yeah. Yeah. He would send them a guide. Yeah. He yeah. would send them someone yeah. who could lead them into truth and keep yeah. them walking. Yeah. In him. And he did that through sending back the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of Jesus Christ, into you and I. Now there is a difference. Hold with me. Don't get angry with me. But there is a difference. In him coming in when you receive him for forgiveness of your sin. He comes in, but the baptism of yeah. him is allowing him to come out. Yeah. You don't want to let him out, Tony. You can't just hold him in all the time. Amen. You got to let him be able to talk to you. Amen. You got to let him be able to talk to someone else. I don't believe in them tongues. Well, I'm sorry, but my Holy Ghost speaks. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. You want me to give you a good example? I normally don't dress like this when I go to church. I don't. Not with my jeans, you know. I dress pants, yeah. But when I got up this morning, and you can laugh, God told me, he said, exactly what I was to wear today for this service. Amen. I said, why, God? He said, just do it. Amen. Just do it. So I'm being obedient, okay? Being obedient to him. So, he brings us, he teaches us, he guides us. Yes, he does. All the way. Praise the Lord. It, those of you who are Bible readers and studiers, you know in Genesis, how that Abraham took Eliezer, yeah. his servant, yeah. and sent him to get a bride for Isaac. Amen. That's right, amen. Yes, he did. Eliezer is a type and a shadow of the Holy Ghost. Yes. Amen. amen. Yes, that's amen. right, amen. And he was sent bearing gifts yes, he was. to go find a wife. But what a lot of people don't understand is that Eliezer didn't pick out the gifts he took. That's right. Isaac picked them out. That's right, amen. Isaac picked out the gifts he wanted to send to his bride. Amen. Jesus Christ picked out the gifts he wanted to send to his bride. Yeah. You. Feeling what I'm feeling. <laughs> Come on. 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 Come on
wants you to do, but what God wants you to do. Hallelujah. Oh, merciful Lord. Timothy, I just read you. Timothy, when he first met Paul, was 16 years old. Amen. Yes. He was 16 years old. And he followed Paul. Yes. Amen. And Paul taught him. He taught him how to love God. He taught him how to minister. He taught him how to pray. He taught him how to walk circumspectfully before the Lord. He taught him how to lay his hands on yes. people and pray for him. He taught him how to take the word of God and expound it to the ears of the people so that they could hear it and understand yes. it and receive God. Yes. And then Paul took him after he'd been trained. You see, you can't fulfill unless you've been trained. Amen. Huh? My job I used to have, I started at the library as a janitor. Cleaning the libraries. And the next thing I know, God said, no, I want you to do this. So they put me in that job. And when it was all said and done, I was running my own library. Yeah, yeah, but it wasn't Gail. No. It was because God put me at the place where I needed to be yeah. in order to reach some souls that needed to come in to the library and be able to talk with me Amen. and ask me the questions they wanted to ask me to get them to God. Amen. 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 Right? It wasn't me that chose it. It was God that chose it. God has a job for you. Yes, he does. Amen. God has a calling in your life. Yes, Timothy grew up and God, uh, Paul sent him under the anointing of God. Amen. Amen. Yes. Thank God. Thank God. Excuse my dry mouth. My medicine makes me dry sometimes. <laughs> but... He took him and he said, it's time now, Timothy, for you to go back to Ephesus and it's time for you to pastor. Yes. That's where we come to this scripture. Timothy went back to Ephesus. He stayed there. And he was pastor in the Ephesus church. But you see, the people were coming so hard against Timothy. Timothy backed up. Yeah. And he didn't stand where he should have stood. Amen. In God. He backed up in bringing them the truth of the word. He backed up and let them begin to tell him what to do instead of him giving them the word of God. Amen. Now, there's a lot of churches in the land like that today. Yeah. Okay. Amen. Thank God this is not one of them. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. Amen. <laughs> so, in this sixth verse of 2 Timothy, first chapter, sixth verse, what Paul is really doing is putting, he's rebuking gently Timothy. And he's saying, I've taught you, son. Yeah. And you've got to stand up in the authority and in the power of the word and the spirit of God and declare to these who's trying to rule over you what truth is. Amen. And don't let them rule over you. You see, I read you in the translations, the different versions of fanning the flame of the gift of the Spirit of God. And you can either accept or neglect God's Spirit. Yes, yes. Timothy accepted what Paul was saying to him. 
and he grew, and he grew. But let me read you a scripture. I think it's in 1 Timothy 1 and verse 18. It says, This charge I commit unto thee, son Timothy, according to the prophecies which went before on thee, that by them thou mightest war a good warfare. What prophecies? Yeah. What, Rob? Was he talking about here? When Paul took Timothy before he ever sent him to Ephesus, he took Timothy and he called the elders of the church together. And they laid hands on him, Brother Bays. And they prayed over him. And words were given to him concerning his call in God. And concerning the work that he was to do in Ephesus. And Paul is saying to them, I'm charging you to remember. Remember the words that went over you. Remember what God God said he was going to use you for. Remember when that pastor called you up there and said to you, God wants you to do this or do that. Remember it? And you haven't done it yet? Huh? Why haven't you done it yet? Is it because you let the word slip? You didn't take the word of the prophecy of God that was given you and use it to grow thereby in your call in order to work in God the way he called you. I'm sorry, I'm not mad. I'm just trying to tell you that God is wanting his church to stand up in the call he's put in them and begin to go forward in it and begin to do the work because, as I said, didn't we have a good revival? Amen. Oh, it was good. But as I said before, God wants the church the only way that people's going to be reached is God works through his church to reach them. And if the church isn't where she needs to be in God, how can she reach the lost? How can she show forth the glory of God? How can she manifest the authority and the power of the Holy Ghost if she is not where she needs to be in order for the people, Amy, to be touched by God? Come on. Mm. I feel God. Glory. It may not be a shouting message, but I'm feeling it. <laughs> Am I rebuking you? No. Gently, maybe. <laughs> Gently, maybe, Brother Bass. Huh? Because sometimes we've got to be gently reminded of what God said to us. Yes. And I know yes. some of you in here that was at the revival, God give you words. Yeah. I know he did. Yeah. Amen. Are you praying into those words? Yeah. Are you praying over those words? Yeah. Are you praying to be put into operation the way that the words were spoken? Yeah. You see, it's one thing for it to be spoken, but it's something else you've got to pray into yes. to understand Amen. what God is saying Amen. to you. Amen. And if you don't, you won't fulfill it. Amen. First Timothy 4 verse 13 says, Till I come, give attendance to reading, to exhortation, and to doctrine. Neglect not the gift that is in thee, which was given thee by the prophecy with the laying on of hands of the presbyter. The laying on of hands. Neglect not. That's right. Now, if I neglect something, what I'm going to do is lay it aside and leave it laid there. Amen. I'm going to ask Freddie or act like 
it never exists that it's not lying there. If I'm going to neglect something, I'm going to not look at it. I'm not going to associate with it. I'm going to go on my own merry way and act like it never was said or happened. Is that the way we're treating the Spirit of God? Come on, That's right. A lot of people are treating God that way. Yes, they are. They only want Him when they want Him, when they need something. Uh -huh. Huh? But God is saying, if we neglect the gift of God, what we are really doing and saying. Boy, when God dropped this in my spirit, it, it, I stood and I looked and I thought and I comprehended. When we neglect doing what God wants us to do, what we are really saying is, oh, well, it's no big deal. Come on. Come on. Amen. I said, God, is that what we're saying? Yes, that's the attitude when you neglect what I called you into and what I want you to be doing for me. You're saying, oh, it's no big deal. Yeah, I wrote it down because I didn't ever want to forget that. Amen. Okay. Lord, help us, God. You see, it's not just that we're hurting somebody else. And it's not just that we're hurting ourselves, but we're hurting God. Amen. When we have the attitude, it's no big deal. Yeah. We should not be content in our spirit if we're neglecting the gift God placed within us but I don't have a gift. Oh, yes, you do. Amen. Amen. I can give you Bible for it. Amen. Because in Corinthians, the 12th chapter, 7th through 11th verse, it tells us that everyone that comes to God has a gift on the inside of them. Some have more than one. Some God can use through three or four different gifts. But everyone that knows Him, He has placed, He's picked out a gift for your character, your attitude, your attributes. He's picked out a gift for you to use and put it within you. That's right. Amen. That's exactly right. Amen. And what we sometimes don't understand is that the gifting of God is our assignment from God in this world. How many remembers going to school and getting homework assignments? <laughs> Remy don't like it either. <laughs> assignments meant part of your grade. Yeah. It had to be done and turned in yeah. oh, in order for your grade to be where it needed to be. God requires homework assignments to be completed. What do you mean? You, God requires us to study, yes. to yes. pray, yes. to sing praise, yes. to give glory, yes. And to take his word and share it. That's our homework assignment. Now, how many is doing homework? I shouldn't have made you put your hand up, child. <laughs> oh, my goodness. We've all had, as I said, things spoken over us. That we failed to pray into and be obedient to. Let me ask you the gift God's put in you, have you unwrapped it? 
Boy, I sat there last night and if I'd had time, but I didn't. I was going to wrap up all these fancy boxes <laughs> as gifts and hang the altar with them. But inside these boxes, I was going to put tongues, interpretation of tongues, prophecy, all the gifts of the Spirit, helps, governments, and have you come up and pick out one and see if you thought the gift inside the box fit you. Hmm? God's put gifts like that in us. And we might think, that don't fit me. Believe me, people. Some of you have known me a long time. <laughs> but believe me, when God called me to minister, I fought with God for a year. My dad never got to hear me preach a sermon. But I got him saved Amen. before he died. And it was because I was fighting against what God wanted me to do that he never got to hear me minister then. But when I said, yes, Lord, yes, to your will and to your way, yes, Lord, yes, I will trust you and obey. And when your spirit speaks to me with my whole heart, I'll agree. And my answer will be, what will it be? What will it be? Yes, Lord, yes. Is that from the heart? I love you guys. I love coming over here to church. Just being with you. But you see, it's like this. I'm down here, okay? Come on up higher. Yeah. Come on up higher. Yes, Lord. Come on up into the presence yes. of the Amen. Lord. Come on up higher to him. You see, in the, it, let, let me, I, I jotted this down. I got to find where I jotted it down because it was good. <laughs> you see, God gives minister gifts to the church. Yes, he did. But he give individual gifts to the body. Amen. Amen. That's right. Mm -hmm. And the ministry gifts you can find in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11 through 13. He gives some apostles, he gives some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers for the perfecting or the maturing of the saints, yes. for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come into the unity of the faith. Huh? Till we all come in to the unity of the faith. All of us. In other words, what he was telling us that the ministry gifts does is they bring us in unity with him in the spirit and with one another. Amen. Amen. And if the church isn't in unity, the church can't work. Amen. That's right. All right. And then after he done that, he gave the body gifts. Yes. He gave the body gifts that in 1 Corinthians uh, 12, 4 through 11, let me see, it says, but the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all, yeah. given by the Spirit, the word of wisdom, the word of knowledge, to another faith by the same Spirit, gifts of healing by the same Spirit, working of miracles, prophecy, discerning of spirits, diverse kinds of tongues, and interpretation of tongues. Yeah. That's yeah. the gifts for the body. Amen. That's the gifts for you. Plus, gifts of help. Uh-huh. You, you turn on over in, in Corinthians 
And read on down through there, it says gifts of health, gifts of government. Yes. Uh -huh. yes. So what am I saying? Here's what I'm saying. The ministry gifts is to teach us and guide us and lead us into the spirit of God and how that we should serve God. The personal gifts of the spirit is for the body to take and function among each other and out Amen. in the world so that they might hear and know Jesus yes. Christ. Amen. All right? I'm not going to keep you a whole lot longer. Rob made mention of this, and I thought about this last night. The word was given to Rob last weekend by Brother Tim that he was to pray over you. And that he was to impart what he felt in his spirit into you. Amen. Yes. To operate through you. Yes. yes. Now this isn't just a confirmation to you, but it does com confirm to you what God's been dealing with you that he wants to use you in. Amen. But it's also, when he speaks over you, it is also to release that anointing for that gifting into your life. Yes. And that don't mean that you're going to run right out, Tony, and lay hands on everybody Amen. at that moment. Amen. But you're going to be taught Amen. and are being taught how to operate in the gifts of the Spirit. Let me tell you something. You don't hear very many ministers ministering on the gifts of the Holy Spirit operating in the church. And they have gotten to the place that the gifts of the Spirit is... That's it. They don't. They don't exist. Because they say, oh, that was for the first church when it established and we don't need it no more. That's wrong. Yes, because if it was for the first church on the day of Pentecost, it's for me today. Amen. Yeah. It's the same spirit. Amen. There's not another. So he was to pray over and confirm what God is equipping you for. Yes. Now I look here in the near future. That you're going to see your pastor saying to you individually of what he feels like God is calling you to work in and go into. Amen. And he's going to pray over you and speak that into your life. You see, there has to be an impartation. That is what Paul done to Timothy. Amen. He imparted into Timothy when he laid his hands on him yes. what Timothy was going to need to fulfill. Yeah. Amen. Oh, but God has to do that. Who does God work through? Yeah. Amen. Huh? Who does he work through? He works through this flesh. Yeah. Amen. Okay? Imperfect people. He does. Imperfect people. And when we lay hands on you and we impart into you, Sister Chelsea, honey, when I give you a word the other night about the impartation of the anointing that was coming on your singing ministry and how God was going to use you, God was putting that upon you and within you to release that through you. It wasn't Gail that was doing it. It was the Spirit of God that was doing it. You see, sometimes God shows us what he's going to do. And sometimes you may come up and say, will you pray? I feel this in my spirit, and I want to be obedient to God. Amen. And if it is God, when hands are laid on you, it will come about. See, Paul was given the revelation of Timothy's call. Yes, he was. Yes. But so was Ananias given the uh, see-through, so to speak, of Paul's. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And if you go back to the sixth chapter of Acts, when they said choose out some men to set over these, uh, giving out the food to the widows, it said they laid their hands on them Amen. and imparted to them the wisdom and the knowledge that they needed. Yes. 
Sometimes I've said, God, all I need is a little bit of wisdom and a whole lot of knowledge. Amen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A whole lot of knowledge with a little bit of wisdom. It'll take care of it. No, no. But don't you have that backwards? No. Because you got to have the knowledge to operate in the wisdom. Amen. <laughs> but you see, you got to have the baptism of the Holy Ghost to operate through the power and the authority of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And that, I guess that's one of the main things I want to say to you today and felt in my spirit, that you've got giftings there. And if you don't have the baptism of the Holy Spirit, you need it. You yes. need it for your power, your authority. Yes. You need it for your strength. You need it for your abilities. Uh, but if you're not willing to receive it, then God can't give it to you. Amen. And you can't walk in it. Church, I love you. I want you to know that. But I'm going to ask you a question. Do you want to be activated? Do you want to be activated? Because God's not going to activate His Spirit within you if you're wishy-washy or you're not really wanting it. Yeah, right. If you're just comfortable like you are, <coughs> you and God will have to take care of that one. Huh? But if you really want to be activated, it's time. To stand up, step up, and be activated. Yeah. Amen. Let's give God a hand and praise this morning. Amen. God is so good. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but if uh, if I stay in one place, I don't grow. Amen. Amen. But I want to grow in this thing. I want to be stronger, I want to be wiser, I want to be more understanding, I want to be more knowledgeable. Yeah. Amen. And uh, some of you may say, well, I don't know about prophecy, but let me tell you this. Uh, it was spoke over over me last weekend that we would um, we begin to see things and pray and lay our hands and impart gifts to people. And uh, just this past week, I've had visions and dreams of individuals in this church. God is showing me. And he's teaching me to understand. See, we get it in our heads that we know so much, but in all actuality, we don't. Amen. And Sister Chelsea, God is showing me how and what to look for so that I know what to pray for each of you. I asked Brother Joey the other day because we know he's, he's talented in music, but I said, what's your calling? Amen. And I said, I'm going to be praying. I want God to show us what that calling is. Amen. Many times, Brother David, we can look at an individual. We know. Amen. Uh, I remember coming to this very church. It was a, well, That's when it was a different name and under different pastorship. But when I was just a boy, and I would sit on uh, Sister Boland's lap. Yeah. Amen. And Sister uh, Sister Boland, she would say, uh, there's a little preacher. You're going to be a little preacher. Yeah. Amen. Sister Mildred, uh, some of y'all didn't even know her first name. You just knew her Sister Boland, but her first name was Mildred. Amen. And she was a, a great woman of God, gone on to be with the Lord. But she'd say, you're going to be a little preacher. Amen. Sometimes you can look at people and you just know. Amen. But the other times it's a little bit harder, isn't yes. it? Amen. Nobody would ever thought, thought Trump was going to be president and then he won. <laughs> Amen. You just never know, do you? And you don't know what God's got in store for you. But I thank God that he has something in store for us. Amen. Amen. He does. Amen. Today's pastor appreciation, but I want to I want to say this that we love this church. Um, we truly love this church. When Sister Haley, when we were uh, having the church renovated, I almost lived here for uh, three or four months, and that was just I don't know last year maybe. But it was I was just here. They would get here early in the morning, start working. I would be here before they come. They would, uh, they would leave and go home. I would stay and make sure everything was locked up and lights were off and all that kind of stuff. Amen. God has placed in the body uh, where he wants you. Amen. When, for fact, when, when we tried to pastor this church before, it didn't work out. Amen. Some of y'all don't even know that. 
but we, we tried to pastor it. it. It didn't work out, and we, we gave the church back, and uh, to be frank and not mean, but there were some people here that thought they could run the pastor. And I told them, I said, uh, when I resigned the first time, I said, you, uh, uh, I said, you want a preacher, not a pastor, and you ain't got that in me. God had equipped me to be a leader, not just a professor of his word. Yeah. And so uh, finally, when, when God wanted to change, he got rid of all the people. Now they go somewhere else. God loved their heart. I ain't got a thing against them. Not, not at all. I love them. If I see them out, I'd hug, hug their neck today. Yep. Amen. But, but they go somewhere else. And then God was able to loose and let his will flow. Amen. You don't know sometime what God has in your life, life because, because you've got chains all around yourself. Yes. Yes. And you won't release it yes. and let God show you because some of us are too self-conscious. Well, what's so-and-so? What is everybody going to think if I get up and begin to do that? Or if I tell Brother Alvy I got a song or I want to help sing or I want to play a musical. What is everybody going to think about that? Who cares what everybody thinks about Amen. that? Amen. Who cares if we wear jeans to the house of God preaching tennis shoes? Who cares? I don't care. Amen. Somebody said, uh, my dear brother Joey, I'm picking on you today. He said, the first time I walked in here on Thursday night, and you it was prayer night, Bible study, and you had on a pair of shorts. You could have knocked me over. You could have floored me. Uh, listen, church, it ain't about the outside. Amen. God is looking on the heart. What is in your heart? If all you have is, is hatred and jealousy and envy and strife, God can't use that. Amen. 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 Would you stand with me, please? Amen. We have uh, fried chicken. At least I hope we do, Brother Dave. We got fried chicken, Brother Dave. We got ham. And we've got all kinds of sides and everything out in the fellowship hall for pastor appreciation. Now, there's there's no service this evening. Don't get me wrong. No service this evening. Amen. They told me I could take the day off or the tonight off. And so I'm going to enjoy that just a little bit. Amen. But I, I hope that you look at the new big square metal building out here. Amen. Uh, because you paid for that. Amen. The old shed was tore down because it was in terrible shape and the, the new one was brought in Friday. Amen. And we thank God for that. And it's just amazing when I look around Aunt Gail, and I see what God has done. And it's not, it's not you. It's not me. It's all Him. Don't ever forget that. Brother Matt, don't ever let us forget that we do nothing, but He does it. Yeah. Amen. 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 All hearts and minds clear. Is there Amen. Amen. All right. Praise the Lord. Brother Bates, would you dismiss us and ask the blessing over the food out yes, there? Yes, Lord. Bless that fried chicken. Amen. <laughs> Lord, in our holy name, Jesus, we thank you for the service this morning. We thank you for the spirit moving this morning. We thank you for the incredible word delivered by an incredible minister. But we thank you for our pastor, yeah. a pastor that we love and cherish and is a good man of God, and we appreciate him today. In your holy name, Jesus, amen. 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 There's somebody in both of them, I hope. Hey, you're not pastor, but I appreciate it anyway. <laughs>
I was your pastor at one time. Yes. Did a good job, Brother Joe. I really appreciate that. Why? Had one bass player. I'm the lesser man on the step down, I guess. I've always believed in taking a back seat. God wants somebody to move. I, I only did it because they didn't buy a bass player left. Be careful. I will. I really don't know the bass that good. You take care of yourself. I will. I'm just <laughs> Huh? I'm a little yeah. today. I, I just believe in taking the back seat. I, I've always believed Jesus oh, yeah. never, never cried for or jealous Two or ever. He asked my wife, I ain't got a jealous bone in my body. I'm done with that. I've got, I've got to win Why? Right. He's got two bases. Well, I, I, I like to get down and move around. Oh, you do? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I do too. Two steroids <laughs> for me. Come down there and want to get into the service. I'm like this. Is that one of yours? And I can't go off. Huh? Is that one of yours? Tony just said something fly. The boys would be a great grandchild. My dad with Tony. And he said, Mom, what's wrong with you? I said, I don't okay. want to sit and sit still. <laughs> that reminds me of the actors. In a month. I'm going to get you step out of my car. I'll meet y'all back. Yes. And I said, oh, yes. I, I, I can't talk. I talk. Oh, I can't brother walk. Elijah. I can't brother sleep. <laughs> you know. How are you? Me, oh, I'm alive. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There you go. Oh, oh, and alive. I slept two nights this week, so I'm Every day you get us a blessing. All right. Bye, darling. Bye. Be careful. All right. We're about to learn a magic trick to make us invisible. They're waiting for us to get out, Tammy. Maybe get for you? No, my Feels better. <laughs>
waiting for that line to die down.
Toyota going? I no longer work for Toyota. No? I quit. Why? What happened? Medical. Mm. Where you at now then? In limbo. Okay. Well, I'm praying for you, man. 100% uh, disabled with the VA. Well, there you go. You got so, one at least. How much does that bring in? Almost 4000 Dang, <laughs> that's pretty good. <laughs> and uh, debating whether file for regular disability or or try something part time. Yeah. For me, when I, I was working for Toyota, when I was at Toyota, every night, back, knees hurting, mm -hmm. and I was like, I can't go on like this. And they're already talking back surgery. Mm. So I'm like, no, I'm just going to quit. You just can't do it. And it's what you by the grace of God, I mean, I, it still hurts every now and then, but it's not every day. Yeah. And at least be thankful for that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they, um, my brother, his V, I think his VA is like 70. I think it brings in like a little over two thousand mm -hmm. a month. So, so I mean, every little bit counts. Yep. Well, well, at least you got your VA. Yeah, that's definitely because I heard the VA can sometimes be. Well, I wasn't even expecting what I got. I was I was thirty percent uh, August of last year. I went and. Had <coughs> applied for some that uh, I had, and uh, I went to the C and P mm -hmm. thing doctor, and uh, they evaluated me and and everything, and and I hadn't heard anything. This is like November. So I went online, was looking, yeah. and all of a sudden it said my case was closed. I'm like, whoa, what's it closed for? So I'm, I'm scrolling down through there. No, this can't be right. This can't be right. So I'm, I'm, I'm figuring it up. I'm like, this right here is already over 120%. Yeah, no, this can't be right. This can't be right. And then I saw something that said, check your disability rating. Yeah. I clicked on it. And it says, your disability rating with the VA is 100%. I'm like, okay. <laughs> it's like, hey. So guys, I'm looking at a little box and it had from when I was 10% then 30, 30, 40, and then 100, and I'm, like, I'm looking at that 100, like, no, that can't be right. And I'm looking down through everything that you know, I had an explanation and, for it. And the reason why, why they gave it, and I'm looking at it, this still can't be right, this can't be right. And I see that 100%, and I'm like, okay, I'm 100%. Then I'm like, oh, oh Lord, can I work? Mm. And I'm, I'm taking rid of the Yes, I can work. <laughs> <laughs> so, from November to June, I was like hurting. I, was like, I can't, I can't so, keep on like this. Yeah, my um, an old buddy of mine at my old job. Um, I left Pratt. Did you? Yeah, I work at a at Swedish Match now, here in Owensboro best move I've ever made because not only am I close to home uh -huh. I'm, I just got finished training and I'm about to start making 28 so to go from 20 to 28 uh -huh. is a huge jump yep I I, I make <laughs> I make 
almost the same amount in one week there as I would two weeks at Brad. That was maybe thirty two something an hour when I quit. I was I was top I was topped out. Yeah. So it, it it's it was, it's pretty good money and you know I'm gonna be busting my my butt off and the thing is it's not physically demanding. Most of the time I'm just most physical work I do is push a broom, man. So my mine was getting off and on the the tugger all the time. <laughs> Is your baby still sick? Yeah, she. we were about to head to church and she started wheezing real bad and then she kept on, um, then she projectile vomited. Oh, no. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's not good. No. hoping we don't have to take her to the hospital. It's every parent's worst nightmare. Yeah. But we... She has been doing... She has been doing better. I just think that a little bit more just just came up just, just because of the change of the weather and everything. Yeah. I'm going to say, because this will be her first fall in winter. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be a bit hard on her. Rachel's currently a stay-at-home mom, but she babysits a little, a little mm -hmm. boy for this little side hustle she's doing. Mm -hmm. um, oh, excuse me, sorry. But um, she, we have that. She brings in about four hundred a month. With my, with the amount of money I'm making right now, I'm bringing in probably a little over. Give or take a little over three grand a month mm -hmm. after taxes and everything. So I mean, we're we're doing good. We've um, we're just trying to <laughs> trying to pay off our phones. Hopefully, sometime by next year, and uh, start paying her car off mm -hmm. and everything. We um. I also just recently, just a couple weeks ago, uh, sold my cobalt. Yeah, it's uh, has a 3.0 V6 in it, four-wheel drive. 
guys, it, the guy who owned it did a lot of work mm-hmm. on this thing. Regular tab or kind of king tab? It's, a, it's an extended, extended tab. tab. So it's got the extended tab, which I like. I was, I'm able to put my tools in the back and was able to put my fishing poles in the bed of the truck and everything because next year I'm, I plan on going on some fish. I plan on going on, on several fishing trips next year because we're about to go to a four on, four on off. That's where you're working at? Yep. I'm about to go four on, four on off. And there will be selling Swedish Match is union. Uh huh. So anything above eight hours is automatic overtime. And we work, and if, when we go to the four on, four off, Saturday is even, any, no matter what, if we work on a Saturday, automatic time and a half. Time and a half, Sunday, so Sunday is double time. time. And when, I will say, I will, I will hate missing on, on I will be here Sunday night, but I will, I will try to be here Sunday morning. Uh-huh. And you work day shift, night shift? Night shift. Night shift. But they're about to have a massive expansion, so there may be an opportunity for me to go through there. Because a buddy of mine who worked at Swedish Match for almost two years, they told her that, oh, you know, it may be eight to ten years before you get your day. And um, not even two years later, she's already going to day. Yeah, it was like Toyota. I was, I was, I had, right before I quit, I had put in for day shift. Yeah. And, uh. are all back, are all shot, back is torn to high heaven, like if your body can't do it, your body can't do it. Yeah. I get down on the floor, it takes me about five minutes to get back up. I can, yeah, I mean, and then I'll, I'll get down, and I'll take a knee, and I'm like, Because if I take the knee on this leg, I can give up faster. Mm-hmm. But if I knee it on this leg, it takes me forever to give up. Because that's a bad knee. No, I just I can just I can get the you know, when it hurts the most, and mm-hmm. I can get up better with this one. Mm-hmm. If I take the if I take the knee right way.
I heard that there was also something of uh, debris in some of the engines too. That must be another main vehicle. I think it was the Tundra. Tundra. The Tundras had that problem because a lot of the air their engines actually blew up. Oh wow! Because of because there was debris left in some of the com engine compartments, and I, I, I remember that we call. And uh, my 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 father-in-law, he worked he worked still worked at Toyota, uh -huh. and uh, he had a he told me he he told me about it, and they're just now starting to you know get things back mm -hmm. up. So I'm guessing the recall is almost done. I know uh, they are not full for they gone by. I think this week they're going to be start hitting kind of full production mm -hmm. at our at the west bank where I work at. Right now they've just been doing uh, my first off was the customer cars that had already been bought, mm -hmm. and then. They recalled all the ones back from the dealership, doing all their mail. They 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 cut seventy thousand vehicles because they said they can't make twenty forty fours anymore because they got to switch over to the twenty twenty fives now. Mm -hmm. And so they cut over seventy thousand vehicles. That's crazy. Now for some reason they said it's the windows down. Yeah, if they were involved in an accident, some type of accident, air, airbags wouldn't deploy. Mm. And I'm surprised Toyota didn't find it for the National mm. Traffic Board found it. Wow. But the National Highway Safety found it before anything happened. Isn't that for um, like they test all vehicles mm -hmm. that go through that testing on track standards yep. and everything. Yep. Hmm. Yeah. Because I know Toyota's got a test track right there, and you just thought they would have done something like that, a crash mm -hmm. test or two. So they, uh, do they have people like, once the vehicle's fully assembled, somebody gets in and like I kind of drives and parks it somehow. Uh -huh. Okay. I yeah, was always curious are, about that. Like, like if this is this where here is the plant that makes the vehicle. Yeah. Same link pin. Signs all over to it. You're now leaving foreign trade zone, you're entering US trade zone. And then they go over here. Might be a little building over here. Back in there is the rail yard. Mm -hmm. And they park all the vehicles there. Yeah. And if a customer orders something, then they different rims, there are different setups set up. They go in that building, they take the wheels off, yeah. put Every the wheels on that they want, and then they destroy the tires and rims. And recycle them instead of sending it. Back to the plant because they said it's cheaper. I mean, more was cheaper. But it's a money idea. They're going to start going back and forth on the trade though. Yeah. They, um, now, I was, um, I thought there was at a time where I thought about getting a, a Tacoma, like buying, there was a 2018 Tacoma I thought about buying. I almost bought it, but I didn't. Thank God I didn't. But it had a, uh, whenever I turned the battery on, like to show the still the screen and everything, uh -huh. it had a, had the check engine light on. I was like, uh-oh, that's not good. But when I turned the, the whole engine on, uh -huh. it went away. Uh, when, when you turn your key on, if you notice, all your gauges will light up. Yeah. Your, all your check engine, or your, all your warning lights, they'll light up. It's a, it's a test to say, okay, I'm working if something happens. Yeah. yeah, I I I was just like, oh, that that may that may not look good for Tom's dealership. So 
I went and told him, like, hey, I was about to test drive this, but the check engine light, you know, came on and whatnot. And I explained to them the whole idea. They were like, okay, you know, like, thanks for telling us. We'll, we'll get this checked out. Because my, my cobalt did the same thing. Mm -hmm. And eventually it just didn't it did stay on. It didn't yeah. go away. So I'm like, okay, this could potentially lead to something. Mm -hmm. So I, was, I didn't want to risk it.